Welcome back to the agenda. He was born in Guadalajara, Mexico and attended Rancho High School right here in the Las Vegas Valley. Earlier this year, he was a Democratic candidate for Congress before stepping aside to make way for former Representative Dina Titus in Nevada's 1st District, representing the state's 10th Senate District, State Senate District, excuse me, right here in Clark County, uh, where he has served since 2006. We're joined now by Ruben Kewen. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. My first time here, and I'm excited. Thank you so much. His inaugural visit here on the agenda. <laughs> yes. uh, all right, let's get right to it. Uh, this rally in Las Vegas yesterday, uh, between 11 and 12,000 people, according to a report, very exciting you spoke just tell us very quickly uh, uh, about the rally and your impressions well first of all I mean I'm glad that the president recognizes that Nevada continues to be a battleground state he's not taking it for granted even though he's up in the polls uh, he understands that East Las Vegas particularly uh, that's heavily uh, populated with Latinos is important and that's why he held that uh, rally in uh, Desert Pines High School in a soccer field uh, with one of the most popular rock bands in the world uh, Spanish language mana Senator, are you happy with what you're hearing from President Obama and other top-of-ticket Democrats as a down-ticket uh, Democratic politician in, in Nevada? Absolutely. I mean, I think the President's message of moving the country forward uh, is what America needs at this moment. Um, you know, look, when he took office, uh, we were losing 800,000 jobs per month. Now we have tw almost 30 months of uh, private sector job growth. Uh, and the economy is moving in the right direction. And so that is the message that, uh, that Americans want to hear. That's the message that Nevadans want to hear. You know, people want to get back to work. We want to have a world-class education here in the state of Nevada. And the president is making all the effort to make sure uh, that we have all the tools in order to provide that education and get people back to work. I think people do want to get back to work, but unemployment in Nevada, just we can't seem to get it under 12%. Uh, no matter what happens, do you think people believe that President Obama in the next four years can't accomplish what he did in the first? Well, remember, when President Obama took office, the, the economy was on the brink of collapse. Uh, we were about to default. So he, he took the leadership, he passed the stimulus package, uh, which helped uh, save millions of jobs, including here in Nevada, uh, over 4,000 teacher jobs. And so again, if things are bad now, they would have been a lot worse uh, had he not taken action when he uh, became president. You know, this debate prepped this week, everyone's talking about expectations and who's going to win and who's going to lose. We showed a poll earlier, 55% of those polled think Obama is going to win. That seems like a problem for him. Seems like expectations are awfully high for him. So let me throw a softball out there for you. Is Mitt Romney a better debater than Barack Obama? Look, Mitt Romney is an excellent debater. Um, is he better saw, than Obama? I think he's better than Obama. Uh, I actually saw the... No, you uh, don't. I actually do. <laughs> look, if you look at Mitt Romney in the primary, I mean, he committed very little gaffes. Um, I think he was the most consistent out of all the Republican uh, candidates, and that's the reason why he got the nomination. Wait, but but, the, but, uh, but the, all but, the Republican candidates, we are talking about a clown car, remember? Uh, I mean, you. you know, Herman Cain, Michelle Bachman. I mean, come on. If he has another, I'll bet you $10,000, moment uh, like he did in the GOP premier, I, primary. I don't think that'll be too right. Well, I mean, I think that showed that he's uh, completely out of touch with the average American. But look, Obama, he said himself yesterday, he's, he's just an okay debater. Um, and so again, I, so yes, you're trying to downplay expectations. We understand that every candidate does this every four years, every time there's a debate. We all go through that kabuki dance or whatever it's called. <laughs> but, but seriously, isn't it a problem though that 55% that of Americans expect Obama to win? I mean, isn't that a legitimate political problem for him as he goes into this debate? Well, look, I think uh, people have confidence in the president. Um, I think he's, he's shown st strong leadership in the last three and a half years, and they expect him to do well. Uh, but again, you know, Mitt Romney's an excellent debater. I watched every single Republican debate, and he does an, he does an excellent job. And I think it's going to be, uh, uh, again, this is uh, Mitt Romney's to lose. I don't know. We've, we've watched President Obama on the campaign trail where he has spent a fair amount of time. He's out there. He loves to banter with the crowds. He's always quick with the one-liner and the quick uh, comeback. I don't see him struggling rhetorically uh, at all. So uh, I guess I, too, expect him to do well. And I'm not trying to, you know, prop him up uh, so that he can, so I can watch how far he falls. I, I, I really do expect him uh, to do well. And I think it might be a little bit of a, a struggle for Mitt Romney to figure out how to thread uh, the needle that he needs to thread to try to turn that that worm his way because it, it, it looks like he's down right now in most of the battleground states. Well, let's move away a little bit if we can from the debate expectations game and, and get back to Obama policy. Um, was there something you, you've met with him several times since he's been president, including yesterday, I presume you got a chance to, to meet with him? Yeah, we should cast. Is there, is there something about Nevada policy 
that you tell him when you have those opportunities? Something that you would like to see him do that you feel the administration has not been aggressive enough about? Perhaps in the line of foreclosures, perhaps. Well, look, I, I think, again, going back to what the most important issue is right now for the state of Nevada, and that's putting people back to work. Um, obviously, my message to him is, look, we're still struggling. You've done a lot. Uh, and I know that the economy is moving in the right direction, but we still have a lot of work to do. Um, and so he recognizes that the economy, unemployment, uh, and foreclosures as well. But when, are you, get it, when you get an opportunity to have the ear of a president, now I know that if I had that opportunity, I'd probably have some <laughs> things to say. Um, I'm trying to look setting him up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't there one thing that you said, please, can you, can you move this agency on this? Can you move this department on that? Is there well, look, one I mean, thing like that? W through our local offices here, uh, uh, we've been able to communicate with the with the national campaign uh, to communicate to the administration of certain programs that need to uh, continue receiving funding so they could continue helping Nevada name one but again uh, you know with the housing a lot of the housing programs uh, you know they've been able to help Nevadans but there's still a lot more that we can do uh, you know remodifications uh, with the loans uh, you know helping to remodify some of those loans uh, that were uh, bloated right, by the banks. Right, but not worked as well as we had hoped. Um, anyway, we will be back with Ruben Kiewen right after this. Welcome back to the agenda. President Obama is running a two-minute ad in Nevada and other swing states. For much of the ad, he is speaking directly to the camera, and Obama lays out what he says is his plan going forward. Basically, that includes yet more tax breaks for businesses to increase more manufacturing jobs, watching the natural gas boom continue, investing more in education, including more money for student aid, and, of course, cutting the deficit by a combination of spending cuts and tax increases on the wealthy. The plan is neither bold nor aggressive, at least not from this raging liberal's point of view, but the ad takes advantage of Obama as the reasonable man in the room and tries to wrap up the message in a red, white, and blue bow. Let's look. A balanced plan to reduce our deficit by $4 trillion over the next decade. On top of the trillion in spending we've already cut, I'd ask the wealthy to pay a little more. And as we end the war in Afghanistan, let's apply half the savings to pay down our debt and use the rest for some nation building right here at home. It's time for a new economic patriotism, rooted in the belief that growing our economy begins with a strong, thriving middle class. Senator, I was somewhat astounded when I saw this ad, not only because of its length, uh, I can't recall a two-minute uh, ad ever in a, any political campaign, but because the, the left usually tends to hyperventilate with what I perceive often as false outrage when the right tries to couch any kind of issue in terms of patriotism and yet here we have the president making what I assume is basically his closing argument in this campaign to the voters talking about economic patriotism. Am I not a patriot if I don't agree with the president's economic plan? Well look I think what the president has made clear in that particular ad and he's been saying it he said it yesterday here in Nevada uh, he believes in an economy that uh, you know, it starts from the middle out, uh, meaning that if the middle class is strong, if, they, if, they, if they're making money, uh, they go out there and spend money, they have uh, disposable income, they go out there and buy houses, furniture, TVs, and so on, that the rest of the business are, are going to do well. Whereas the Republicans believe that it's a trickle-down economy, that if the rich are doing great, that it's going to trickle down to the middle class. Uh, and so what this ad particularly mentions is that you know, uh, middle class out uh, approach, that if the middle class is strong, the rest of America is going to be strong. So if the upper class doesn't want their taxes raised, or if a business owner doesn't want his taxes raised, is, is he unpatriotic because he's not, by a, President Obama's definition, participating well, I, I, sufficiently I, in the economy? I think the priority here should be cutting taxes on the middle class uh, and, and having the, the millionaires and the big corporations just pay a little more. That's all we're asking them for. If we're, if we're all in it together, if this is our country, then we all have to pay a fair share, play by the same rules, and, and, and make our middle class stronger so we can have a stronger economy. And if after, after watching Karl Rove's machine through the Bush years, calling the patriotism card every other day on every conceivable issue, I don't know that it's something that the Democrats want to do, but if they're trying to even up that playing field by calling the other side 
something less than patriotic, they've got another six, eight years of doing it before they're going to be even or not. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of, listen, I want to circle back to policy really quickly. We were talking about the economy and the president's role in trying to help the economy. But doesn't the state of Nevada also have a role to play in economic development and diversification? And I guess, where really is the Democratic agenda as we head into a legislative session on that score? Look, I completely agree with you. Who, a part of our responsibility uh, also, you know, not just as Nevadans, but as legislators, uh, is in the state legislature. Uh, what are the approaches that we're taking to diversify our economy? I think the first thing that we need to do here in the state of Nevada is, is make a, a serious investment in education. If we have a, a good education system, we're going to be producing... Everybody uh, agrees with that. Yeah, Let well, me stop you right there and ask you where the money's going to come from. Well, again, that's the debate that we're going to have next legislative session. We've had it every single session, but what, one thing is clear. You invest in education, you're going to have, in the long term, a well-educated, well-trained uh, workforce, in or, and then our economy is going to get diversified. As Hugh said, we all agree with that on both sides of the aisle. The teachers uh, union in this state is pushing a margins tax as a way to fund K-12 education. Do you support that? Well, look, I don't have all the details yet on it, so I, I don't want to take a stand on it. Uh, you but haven't look, read the proposed but, but what bill. I do propose, uh, or what I do support, is more funding for education. I think that's been part of the problem. Uh, we have one of the lowest per pupil spendings in the country. If we don't make a serious investment in education, we're not going to have a well-trained and well-educated workforce, and we're not going to have a diversified economy. All right, Senator Keeman, thanks so much for coming in today. We so appreciate it. When Elizabeth and I come back, Republican state Senate candidates in Nevada are getting attacked for their party's position on the federal Medicare program. Is that fair? Maybe more importantly, is it smart? We'll look at that right after this. <laughs>